Let's get Christmassy together! I love Christmas, as you can tell. Are you ready? Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rose. And since we're all starting to decorate our houses, hanging up our Christmas lights and everything, I was wondering, how do you pick the right Christmas tree for you? And also, are they sustainable or which pick is the most sustainable? That's what I want to find out in this video. And for that, I went to one of the biggest garden centers who sell Christmas trees, the Bosrand in Bassenaar. And they are also kindly sponsoring this video. I didn't realize this, but there are a lot of different kinds of Christmas trees. And also, of course, different sizes. These are tiny, these are a little bit bigger and really big ones as well. But what that actually means, I don't know. Is there one that is better than the other? Is there one that is more sustainable or just looks better? Let's find out. To answer all those questions, I actually found John, who is the little brother of Jim. <laughs> if you've seen the Bosrand video that I did before, check it out in the card. <laughs> Hi, thank you so much for talking to us. Yeah, no problem. So I heard actually there is a traditional type of Christmas tree. Yes, true. and that one has a really nice smell, but the less thing about it is that it doesn't hold its needles as well as other varieties. Okay. So that's probably why you don't have it then yet, because we, by Christmas it might have dropped. Yeah, it's, uh, it's still a bit early for Christmas, so uh, we don't have them in stock yet. And other varieties who, which uh, keep their needles uh, a bit longer, we already have them because if people put them in their house, they still have their needles it when, it's, when it's Christmas or uh, even New Year's Eve. Okay, awesome. So then, is there another type that still smells nice, but doesn't drop the needles as quick? Yeah, that's uh, the most popular tree at the moment is the, the Norman tree. Okay. Uh, the Norman tree have soft needles, uh -huh. also quite fresh green, and they also hold the needles much longer. Okay. So that's the most sold Christmas tree at the moment. Uh, the most popular guy. Yeah, the most popular one, yeah. Yeah, we have them over here. It has more soft needles, it's more fresh green. Uh, and also smells uh, smells a bit. Yeah, uh, so it smells quite nice actually. <laughs> yeah, so that's why it's so popular at the moment. Is but there actually a price difference between the different ones? Are these more expensive? Well, the Nordman is, if you look at it, a traditional Christmas tree is a bit more expensive, okay. but the price is uh, dropped uh, a lot more because it's yeah, became the most uh, popular tree. Yeah, so um, more people are growing them, so they become more affordable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Just like, like houseplants. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like that. Yeah. So what about those that look a little bit more blue? Uh, yeah, you also got the, we call it in Dutch, the, the Blauspar, the Picea Tunges Glauca. That is a variety that has a more blue color in it, also a hard needle, so if you get them from the store, make sure you have gloves on it. Okay, okay. Because they're Great less tip. soft than the Norman, uh, for example. Okay, but people like it maybe for the color. Do they also smell nice? Uh, they smell a bit, but not as much as the traditional Christmas tree, more like the Norman. Uh, okay, so these are the blue ones. Yeah, those are, have a bit of uh, hard needles. Yeah, and those are really blue. Most people like the color of it. It's a bit different than the rest of the, the Christmas trees. But you see already, we have the really blue one over here yeah. and a bit more green over here. Uh, but they are the same. They're the same variety. Oh. Uh, they put them in a different grounds so or different fields. And sometimes the soil is a bit different uh, between them and they have a different kind of nutrition. So sometimes they become more blue than the other ones. That is so cool. I thought these were different kinds. <laughs> Look at that, you guys. All right, that's awesome. So do you sell a lot of Christmas trees? Yeah, we sell quite a lot of Christmas trees in a year. In these two months, we sell around 35,000 Christmas trees. Whoa. And we also have really large Christmas trees, as we have here. Yeah. Those are even eight to nine meters. And those go to bigger cities uh, in the neighborhood, like The Hague or Amsterdam, or for special projects or for sample churches. Ah, <laughs> and these are like super, super big, right? So yeah. Let's take a closer look at that stem. How many years old do you think this is? Oh god, 20 years or something. Whoa. And this one actually still has pines. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's how cool. they normally grow. <laughs> so do you know, are these treated with anything? Like pesticides or something? The nurseries where we get them from try to do it with a natural way. So for uh, example, they use predatory bugs. They try to do it as natural as possible. And uh, okay. this is the thing that we also want. We don't want to have all the pesticides anymore. Yeah, but then <laughs> of course, sadly, they do wrap them in plastic to be able to transport them. So that is something yeah. that not, is not necessarily. Yeah, it doesn't really sustainable, but it's difficult to transport them on the rice. Because, yeah, because uh, they are huge. To be compact them is, is an easy way. Maybe in the future they will find another way to uh, do this even better. Yeah, maybe someone can have a good idea. Someone can discover some kind of wrapping for Christmas trees that is sustainable. Let us know in the comments. 
Another important thing is how you put your Christmas tree up in your house. Of course, you want it to be straight and that can be a little bit of a hassle. They have a system here that is called Easy Fix, where they pop the tree up this little machine and they hold on to the top of the stem with the little handle you see there. And then when they push down the handle at the bottom, the machine drills a screw hole basically into the bottom of the tree. The tree is starting to smoke a little bit, but that's okay. And that basically means that your tree is always level. So when you pop it onto one of the Easy Fix bases, which also has a water basin in there, very practical, it's always level and it looks good. There you go, thumbs up. <laughs> so where do you actually find these trees? Uh, we get these trees from Denmark uh, mostly and also a bit of Germany. Do you pick them yourself or? Yeah, we go with uh, a team from the Bosrand. We go into the fields uh, and we search for the most beautiful trees for in-house. What is the selection process? What do you look at for the most beautiful trees? We uh, first look at the shape of the tree. So it has to be wide underneath and a, yeah. bit, uh, a bit like a pyramid, like a cone. Yeah. Sometimes uh, people want some smaller trees and some uh, people want some wider trees, so we choose different ones. Okay. We also look for the density of the needles in the oh, tree okay. and if they're looking healthy, because if there are already needles falling off, then it's not a tree that's uh, for the boss run. Do they naturally grow in this beautiful, perfect size and shape? Some do, but uh, sometimes they uh, grow in a different way. For example, this goes more like this, yeah. then they put something in between them. Oh. Yeah. Like plant braces. Like, like some braces like that, yeah. And that way they make sure they have the perfect shape. So they actually do get a lot of personal attention. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> nice. I didn't know that. So these trees are actually cut. So they yeah. obviously will die after using them. Yeah. yeah. But they have grown for I don't know how many years, right? Yeah, they've grown for uh, yeah almost, I think, 12 years, this kind of trees uh, from this size. And you can also count them if you look at the oh, stem. Yeah. You can see, see the rings in it. You can count them from year to year and you see that this one is around uh, 12 years old already. That's so cool. I forgot about that. We learned that in school, but I never thought yeah. to do that yeah. with Christmas trees. <laughs> it's uh, still possible with this one. Yeah. If it's sustainable in 12 years, they take a lot of carbon dioxide from our yeah, natural systems. And that's a good thing, I mm -hmm. think. And as a red they also plant a new one. Nice. Yeah, it's a circular system. Uh, so in that way it is a good thing, but, but the less good thing is of course they just cut the tree and it goes in your living room and afterwards you throw it away. So then the ones that have the clumps around them, yeah, yeah, are yeah. they more sustainable? Because I saw on the card that it says uh, not guaranteed to grow afterwards. Yeah, they take it from the fuse and put it out of the ground and then afterwards they pot it. So they have a little bit of roots, but a lot of, uh, of it is already off. Yeah. So if you put it in a, in a pot, then there's no guarantee that it will uh, grow afterwards. Okay. There's a possibility, but it's not, uh, it's not a big one. Okay. <laughs> Another option might be a fake tree, a plastic tree. We actually have one of those at home. Although it may seem more sustainable because you don't cut down a tree every year, it is made from plastic, so that's not great. And to make it sustainable, you'll have to use it your whole life. Are there trees that are grown in pots so that they will continue to live? Uh, yeah, we have also uh, pot-grown trees. I can show you one if you want. Yeah. These trees are in a pot. This is a Picea conica glauca. That's a species that's also uh, put a lot of in front of the house, a bit of smaller trees. But there's a big difference between those uh, two. For example, if you take this one out of the pot, you see oh. that everything <laughs> falls off. Yeah. So Whoops. there's not a lot of roots on it. And this one does have a lot of roots. Yeah, that looks like a house plant. Yeah, these they take from the field. And this they grow up in a smaller pot. And after a year they put in a bigger pot and so on and so on yeah, just like like, uh, like the house plants yeah. yeah okay but then there probably is a price difference <laughs> between the two yeah this one for example is more three times as expensive as this one okay so you do have <laughs> to pay a little bit more yeah then you do have a tree that lasts forever well if yeah. you're good at taking care of them and after us can also put it in your garden i mean yeah. next year i'll take it out and yeah, put it uh, in front of the house again do. They, yeah. She reused the Christmas tree every year. Yeah. <laughs> and then it became so big that it was bigger than our house. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a possibility <laughs> like that, yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much for talking to us. Yeah, no problem. They just told me that I can actually take home that really, really nice pot-grown sustainable tree. Of course, we're ending this adventure with a traditional Dutch olie bowl, which we normally eat 
at New Year's, but they are very Christmas vibey as well. <laughs> Thank you so much to the Bosran for working with me and for gifting me this beautiful Christmas tree. I'm super excited. It already smells delicious. Let me know what you do with Christmas. Do you buy a tree or do you prefer a fake tree or do you just hang your lights in your Monstera? <laughs> I would love to know. Thanks so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.